this morning it was fairly cloudy, more like an overcast, and I had perfect solar weather here in the off-grid garage. Welcome to another video here from the off-grid garage in sunny Australia. It is not hot though. We had only five degrees last night. So it is getting a little bit chilly. The batteries like it. They are sitting on 15 degrees inside this box here. So they are not getting too cold. I hope in summertime they're not getting too hot either. Yeah, and in today's video, I actually want to talk about the weather or more like the whole solar situation here in the off-grid garage. Well, at the moment, you can see we have uh, noon and 1000 watts from our solar panels coming in. 500 watts going to the pool pump, which runs on an increased power at the moment because the pool cleaner is working. And still we are charging with around 500 watts into the battery here. If we have a look, uh, 470 watts from the west roof, 435 from the pool and 180 from the east roof only. They are still shading on here. So quite a few people have actually asked how much kilowatt hours I'm actually making here with this system and if it is worth doing because of all the trees around the garage here. And well, as you know, we are building up more solar panels on top of the roof here in the shade. This is all fully shaded in winter time. So around from, I would say from April to August. Yeah, April to August, most of the roof will be shaded actually. So this is north facing. This is where the sun is in Australia. I, I know, right? This is um, upside down the other way around. It's, um, yeah, it's north. The sun is north here. And we now have solar panels up until, well, so three strings. One, two, three, yeah, a bit over the half mark of the garage we have solar panels now and then we will have another two strings of solar panels this way which is in the shadow in winter time is it worth doing it absolutely guys absolutely the more solar you have the more energy you create even in the shade yeah and now in winter time with the shadow of all the trees here on my roofs it is actually far better in terms of power generation if we have a slight overcast as today because this diffuses the light and I'm generating about five times more energy in these mornings when it's still a bit foggy you know in autumn winter time here this is far better than pure sunshine because the sun will be only a single spot just behind the trees somewhere and there's not much light coming through but if we have this overcast with the clouds and everything it diffuses the light and the light comes basically from all directions onto the solar panels and you can see a dramatic increase in solar generation and here we can actually have a look at the data i have collected since i have installed the system last year in january well, it is not quite true because I installed the Raspberry Pi with the Venus OS system in May last year. And we have now beginning of June here in Australia. So I have data for the last 365 days. And here you can see a perfect day for me in winter time. 3.2 kilowatt hours produced so far. And this is only because we had this overcast, these light clouds in the sky, and they have reflected all the light back onto the solar panels. So this was more of an overcast morning. If we have a look at yesterday, for example, we had some clouds in the morning. You can see the production is fairly high in the morning here. If we go one day further back, we will see that the morning production is far lower here with pure sunshine and the overall production from the day before yesterday, only four kilowatt hours. Let's have a look at the last seven days. So red is what I have consumed and yellow is what I have produced. And of course, the state of charge of the battery, that's the blue line, goes down because I'm using more energy than I actually charge into the battery during the day. But this is a perfect example of having such a large battery with now over 40 kilowatt hours of usable energy. And since I did the last full charge, like, like two weeks ago or something, I'm still living off this energy of the battery and I'm only recharging a tiny bit every day, but I'm using far more for the pool pump and car charging and the garage here than I actually uh, um, charge into the battery. But we are now down to about 30%. So one third would mean we still have one battery bank fully charged while the other two are completely empty. Just so you get a better understanding how much that actually is. 
So it's basically our old battery 1.0 here, fully charged. This is how much energy I still have left. And I guess for the next uh, three or four days, I don't need to charge the vehicle because it's weekend and I'm working from home the beginning of next week. So I don't need any energy for the vehicle. And I think I can actually recharge the battery a tiny bit. Uh, let's see if this works. And let's have a look at the May result, May 2022. And here you can see our two tests where we fully charged to 100%. This was the first test with the active balancers connected and the second test here without the balancers. And there are two weeks in between. And you can see the solar production when I try to recharge the battery to 100%. The yellow parts actually show that I have put more energy into the battery than I used of the battery. But then once it's fully charged, I turn on all the loads again and well, the state of charge obviously goes down because I don't have enough solar generation. And then here in the middle of the month, I did the same again. I turned off most of the loads and tried to recharge the battery as quick as possible to reach the 100% state of charge. So we could finalize the test setup without the active balancers connected to these three battery banks. And then since then, well, I don't care. I just leave the loads connected. Here, for example, you can see 7.8 kilowatt hours used, but 4.3 only recharged. Of course, even the largest battery is empty at some point, right? And here's a perfect example. If you So we have now a little bit of clouds in front of the sun, thin layer of clouds, and we are still generating 1160 watts here around 450 watts from the east and west roof each and about 300 watts from our pool fence system. Okay, let's have a look at the last 365 days of having this system installed with a four kilowatt peak solar system. And well, we started with 15 kilowatt hours in the battery in number one. And now we've got like 45, 44 kilowatt hours usable energy in these um, three battery banks right now. And from here, you can see I have managed to produce more than three megawatt hours of electrical energy. 3.1 megawatt hours. I find this quite mind blowing. And remember, these are all used solar panels, which I picked up for very, very little money. And they are like seven, eight, nine years old already. Put them on my garage here, connected all the batteries to it and three million watt hours. Every time I look at this, I find this mind blowing. Yeah, so we can see here in May, there is pretty much nothing. This is only when I started having the Raspberry Pi set up and it was sending data to the Victron VRM portal here. So there's only 0.68 kilowatt hours. Must have been end of May when I installed the Raspi. But then in June, well, June is in the middle of winter here. This is pretty much exactly one year ago now. Can see the solar generation 76 kilowatt hours only in July, 100 kilowatt hours. And then it goes already up again. You can see here in August, this is like 60% more than the month before. September, 245. October, 380. November was a bit more cloudy, 360. And December is our best month ever with over 470 kilowatt hours from a four kilowatt peak system. That is mind blowing, right? That is insane. And you can also see I have used 460 kilowatt hours. We have run the air condition. We have run the pool pump 24 seven. The car was charging. We basically let the lights on during the night. And this was still with the old battery 1.0. So there was only 15 kilowatt hours connected, but, but I managed to produce about 22 kilowatt hours a day. So, so I could fully recharge this battery and more each day. And then January was when the clouds came in and we started to flood in a little bit. We had our first flood event this year in February. You can see how the production goes down from 470, 326, almost 300, 280, 222, 150 last month. And June has just started with 11.4 kilowatt hours so far. So guys, you can see it is nothing different to any other graphs I have seen from other areas. It, it is just the opposite. So during October to January, we have our peak here, our summer peak. 
Well, if you live in the northern hemisphere, you have your winter low then and produce almost no energy. If you watch other YouTube channels as well, they have huge, huge solar installations, 20, 25, 30 kilowatt hour peak, and they are not generating much either in European winter. And 3,100 kilowatt hours per year. This is probably what an average family with three people, a household with three people uses an average in Germany. And you can always have a look at this off-grid garage VRM portal here yourself. There's a link under each of my videos in the description down. You just click on it and you can go to this website here and can play around with the data as well and see how much energy I have actually created in certain months, in certain time periods. And I'm still getting a few comments about, well, Andy, you should cut down all these trees. Um, probably not. This is a really nice garden and we bought it actually because of all the trees here. There are far too many people cutting down trees these days and we really need these trees. And even these suggestions to uh, trim them down a little bit, this is not a feasible solution for these trees because this one, for example, we've measured the height of this one here with 42 meters. There's no access for any machinery or here for any lift or something that people can go in there and cut certain branches off. And even if so, where do I stop, right? Where do I stop? I've got trees all around these sheds here, right? And this is just the situation we have. This is just how it is. And I'm certainly not going ahead and cutting any trees down or even trimming them at the moment. Cutting such a big tree down here costs me around three and a half thousand dollars. And I'm not willing to spend this money. And with all these trees around here, we have actually a three to four degree cooler temperature than other properties down in the valley where there are no trees anymore. So they're really helping a lot here in summertime, cooling down the whole area. And it makes quite a big difference if you have 41 degrees or only 37 degrees. So unfortunately, all these trees have to stay and we have to work around the trees with our solar. I mean, imagine if these trees would not be on our property, right? There would be nothing you can do. If you get shading on your solar from a neighbor building or a tree which is not on your property or a mountain in the distance, there is just not much you can do. The only thing you can do is you can put more solar up to compensate for these losses. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do here. I want to see, I want to find out how much can I push this? How much energy can I get out in wintertime, even with the shading of these trees? Is it worth covering all the, all the roofs here with solar panels completely, even they are the majority of the year in the shade of these trees? Is it worth doing it? How boring would it be if there would be no trees? We have the perfect roof facing north, yeah, north where the sun is, and we would just generate lots and lots and lots of energy during the day, right? It would just work. It would just work. Of course, from a pure energy perspective, that would be ideal. But how many people have an ideal situation in their solar installations? I guess not many. There are always compromises you have to deal with when you have solar on your roof. And I find it quite more interesting to have this situation with all the shadow here. And we try different things, putting solar panels here against the, the pool fence. And I'm walking around the property now when the sun is shining and have a look which areas have actually no shade from trees at the moment in winter time. Because in summertime I will have so much energy, I don't bother about this at all. It is more like finding these sweet spots for winter time usage. Here are other used solar panels which go on the roof very soon. And here, just um, behind the pool fence, this would be, uh, for example, an area where we have no shading. See, the trees are far away. Ah, there's a magpie. All good, my friend. See, and the sun, this is our winter sun. It is, it is still fairly high up in, at noontime now. And here we've got perfect space for a ground mount solar system. But then I thought, why not using this water tank? We've got the same situation here. And now the sun comes actually out, which is nice, which gives us a good perspective here on this area. So I'm really thinking of putting solar panels here on top of this concrete tank. And we can have the cables running here on this retaining wall 
all the way to the pool pump area. There's a little distribution box with all the electrical stuff in for the pool pump. And this is where we can connect, for example, a micro inverter. And then we can harvest lots of energy here in wintertime during the day and feed this energy directly as AC into our micro grid. And the Victron MultiPlus 2 can handle up to 5 kilowatts of external power being pushed into this microgrid. Yeah, and it can also charge our batteries from this AC installation then here. And this is exactly what I mean. I find this quite interesting to find these little spots here, which I have never thought about installing solar panels on. But this is quite a nice spot because there are no trees growing here. The palm trees don't get any taller and the sun is still fairly up here so there's no shading to be expected having a roof pointing to the north or south yeah. how boring is that right how boring here we've got an east roof and a west roof and we've got the same here west and east and we will have solar panels everywhere and i want to see how this all works out and i really think working around the um, shadows here on the property around the trees and everything this really fits the topic of our channel here because as you know I never go the straight way. Even I know this is how I should set up a solar charge controller, for example. I always try different settings and see what happens if we change these settings to this value just for testing and experimental purposes. And pretty much the solar installation is no exception here. This is basically the situation we have and I'm trying to make the most out of it and see what works and what doesn't work. We will try out optimizers for solar panels and microinverters very soon here on the channel and see how they work together with our power wall. It's the the dark with our power wall and our battery together and just explore different things we can try because many of you are in the same situation. I'm receiving still messages and emails and I'm reading all your comments and people are asking, what can I do? I have only this situation and I haven't got enough roof space. How can I increase my solar production, for example, and what can I do? And all these ideas I found myself online here in wintertime, putting up solar panels against the fence and having a cable running across the driveway here connected to a solar charge controller and i mean this system here produces 1.8 kilowatt hours a day for me a day yeah it all comes together it all adds up i've got half a kilowatt hour with these two which um charging my battery here and i think there are always possibilities somewhere to put a solar panel here and there just just produce more energy Okay, guys, I think so far this video was uh, just, uh, just a bit of rambling along, but I really wanted to show you my solar production here for the last year, basically, and also talk about the situation we have here in the off-grid garage with the installation of solar panels. Yes, I'm installing solar panels here on the roof, even it is in the shade. But again, this is a seasonal thing, and the more I can harvest in wintertime, well, I certainly don't have any issues in summertime then. And this is basically exactly what you will find with your system as well. Unless you live in an area where the sun shines all the time and you have a perfect north or south orientated roof. But these are all perfect circumstances and environments which you, which you don't find often really. Most people will have some kind of limitation with their solar production as well. Anyway, guys, let me know how your solar production goes during the year and what kind of challenges are you facing with your solar installations? Do you have shadow of trees or buildings or mountains even or radio towers from the distance? Anything which compromises your solar production and you have to find a way around it because you cannot change the situation. Yeah, if you want to leave your stories down below, I'm always keen to read these and we can all learn from that and um, and sharing our experience here is one of the major benefits of having such a youtube channel as always guys until the next video you stay charged stay safe and thanks so much for watching see you then bye bye yeah and of course thank you for leaving so many comments under my videos and also for your very generous financial contribution and donations here to the channel for buying me a beer thank you very much to everyone who has done either